Hi, on today's video, I want to take a look at uh, something we looked at in the summer of 2018. And I think it's an important lesson to learn, to relearn again today. And um, if, if you check on the on the uh, YouTube page, you can look up capnocytophagia and find an interview that I did with infectious disease expert, uh, Dr. Steve LaRosa about this topic, uh, if you want some more information. But if you remember, this is from the summer of 2018, uh, it was reported all over the place of these two uh, patients in Wisconsin that died of this bacterial infection, capnocytophagia. Uh, a, the woman died, and not too far away, there was a Wisconsin man who ended up having a quadruple uh, amputation uh, due to this devastating infection. And it appears that neither of them were immunocompromised in any way. They were immunocompetent patients. Um, one was nipped on their hand by a dog, and the other one didn't even get bitten. It was believed he just got licked. Um, so a very, very serious stuff. And that's really my reminder in this video is that um, though you're going to see through... Um, expert websites that the people at most at risk for a fatal infection um, is people that are immunocompromised, but not always the case. And we got to keep that in mind. And this is the CDC website on it. And just want to go over a few factoids, uh, right? Many capnocytophagia germs are normal bacteria commonly found in the mouths of people, dogs, and cats. Um, these germs sometimes cause opportunistic infections, which means under the right conditions, they can cause an infection such as a person in a weakened immune system. And when you think of capnocytophagia infections, these are the conditions that you think of, of people that do get these very devastating infections. Uh, people with alcohol problems, people that don't have their spleen anymore, or people that are in an immunocompromised uh, condition, such as um, HIV or they're taking uh, uh, other kinds of drugs for maybe cancer or other types of drugs that would suppress the immune system. Um, so it's very, it's very, very common. It's, in fact, it's, I think I read somewhere that about 74% of dogs have this bacteria in their mouth. Let me go over a couple more factoids before we move on. Uh, these are some of the symptoms that you may see blisters around the bite wound, uh, redness, swelling, fever, vomiting, headache, muscle and joint pain. And a lot of times you also see uh, purpura, right, where the, the blood vessels um, underneath the skin are bursting. So you get these purple dots. Uh, so very, very um, uh, serious disease. And the symptoms are very nonspecific very early on. So that's another important thing to note is that you was there contact with animal saliva very very important to know and to tell the physician and the last thing i just want to go over this again risk of infection uh you're at higher risk well let me point this out the cdc is very specific about this people with certain health conditions are at a greater risk of infection but anyone can become sick from capnocytophagia bacteria those at higher risk as i said people that use alcohol excessively, people who do not have a spleen, people that have immunocompromising conditions, uh, which could include cancer, diabetes, HIV infections, and people taking drugs that would lower the immune system, such as chemotherapy. Most capnocytophagia infections occur in adults over 40 years of age. However, there have been cases diagnosed in young children. Now, what I'm going to take you to now is a 2015 study out of the European Journal of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases. And they talk about capnocytophagia as an emerging cause of sepsis and meningitis and post splenectomy infection after dog bites. And they talk about this in the abstract. Newly named in 1989, capnocytophagia canamorsis is a bacterial pathogen found in the saliva of healthy dogs and cats and is transmitted to humans principally by dog bites, but not necessarily by dog bites. So in this review, they compiled all the laboratory confirmed cases, animal sources, 
virulence attributes uh, to describe the epidemiology and clinical features, etc. An estimated 484 patients with a median age of 55 were reported, two-thirds of, of which were male. The case fatality rate was about 26%. The clinical presentations included severe sepsis, fatal septic shock, gangrene of the digits or extremities, high-grade bacteremia, meningitis, endocarditis, and eye infections. Predispositions were pr prior splenectomy in 59 patients, alcoholism in 58 patients. Dog bites before illness occurred in 60%. Additionally, 27% there were scratches, licking, or other contact with dogs or cats. Meningitis was seen in in patients with more advanced ages. Um, patients with prior splenectomy presented more frequently with high-grade bacteremia than patients with intact spleens. The organism itself possesses quite a few virulence factors, including uh, catalase, sialidase production, gliding motility, cytotoxin production, and resistance to killing by serum complement due to its unique lipopolysaccharide. Penicillin is the drug of choice, but some practitioners prefer third-generation cephalosporins or beta-lactamase inhibitor combinations. So, so what that really does is it brings me to this more recent um, study or article, and this is from the European Journal of Case Reports in Internal Medicine, and it's about a German man who was immunocompetent. He was perfectly healthy man, and he died after being licked by a dog from capnocytophagus sepsis. And let's look at some of the highlights of this. Um, of course, they say bite infections caused by capnocytophagia are rare. Um, and typically, like we said a hundred times, that it's typically in patients that are immunocompromised, uh, don't have a spleen, or have alcohol abuse issues. In this case, it's a 63-year-old man from Germany who developed flu-like symptoms and presented after some delay with severe sepsis and purpura fulminans. He was found to be infected with capnocytophagia without a bite injury and did not demonstrate immunodeficiency or any other typical predisposition. And despite his extensive intensive care, he deteriorated and I think he was hospitalized for like and being treated for like 16 days and he died. And any key things in the uh, case description? Um, and anyway, here's some photographs of the papura. And you can see it on his head, forehead, on his nose, and of course his hand. And he was getting a lot of gangrene going on around the fingers. Anyway, on the fourth day of hospitalization, because obviously they didn't know what he had initially, uh, blood cultures yielded gram-negative bacillus, catenocytophagia, canamorsis. And that's when they started um, adding additional antibiotics, in this case Cipro, to the antibiotic regimen. Uh, he also started getting some other types of um, uh, fungal infections, including uh, Candida albicans, and I read in here also um, there was MRSA, and uh, Aspergillus infection also. Let's go to the discussion. Our report of a patient with fatal septic shock due to capnocytophagia describes several noteworthy features, which may be important to clinical practice. It's a gram-negative rod, facultative anaerobe bacteria that inhabits the oral cavity, especially of dogs and cats. Uh, capnocytophagia infection is most frequently transmitted by dog bites. Infections are generally rare, ranging from self-limiting local skin infections to septic shock, as in this case. Uh, severe and fatal infections have been reported in patients with immunodeficiency, splenectomy, and alcohol abuse. Um, and the occurrence of purpura fulminans is an early ominous sign of a progressive severe course. Important to remember. So, like I said, a lot of times you're going to start out with these kind of nonspecific flu-like symptoms but you got to put two and two together. And if you can relate it to some kind of exposure to animal saliva, that would be important information. Um, our patient did not show any immunodeficiency. Uh, in addition, he only touched and was licked by his dog 
in the weeks prior to infection. Uh, therefore, we assume that there was a low bacterial concentration during transmission. Um, despite this, the patient develops septic shock with fatal multi-organ failure. And upon admission to the hospital, he already had the purpura. Now, very rarely, severe campnocytophagia infections without biting or scratching have been reported. So it is possible. Again, they're saying that it's fatal in about 25% of patients. We've seen 25, I've seen 26, I've seen 27, but you get, you get, the, you get the, um, the message here that about a quarter of patients with this infection um, can die, have died. Uh, then it says here, what are the clinical implications of this case report? Pet owners with flu-like symptoms should urgently seek medical advice when symptoms exceed those of a simple viral infection, which in this case were severe dyspnea dyspnea, which is uh, difficulty in breathing, and petechiae, these purple dots on the skin. Uh, physicians confronted with such patients should ask about contact with dogs and cats. They should consider capnocytophagia infections also in the presence of purpura fulminans and the, presence, and the absence of animal bites or scratches and any immunodeficiency. In, in such cases, the clinician should immediately start empiric treatment with a penicillin in combination with a beta-lactam inhibitor until a definite uh, diagnosis is established. So, again, a, a relatively rare type of infection, fatal in at least about 25% of people. Typically, the patients are immunocompromised in some way, right? Alcohol abuse, uh, HIV, cancer, on, on, on uh, types of drugs that would make you immunodeficient. Um, and most importantly, uh, if you don't have a spleen, that's, that appears to be the greatest risk factor for this infection. It's uh, transmitted via animal bites, cats and dogs, particularly dogs, but can also be con contracted with just exposure to saliva, like licking by the dog. So very, very important stuff. And you will show some symptoms early on of uh, Typical flu-like symptoms, um, but as the report notes that if it goes beyond that, it's time to see somebody. So it's just a very important thing that it doesn't always happen to immunocompromised people. It can happen to immunocompetent people. So just uh, uh, another reiteration of this and very important lesson on capnocytophagia. Well, I hope you liked it. Uh, please share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel like the video, and please comment below if you have something to say. I want to hear about it, and I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV.